Good morning, Your Honor. Good morning, Your Honor. Ron French appearing on behalf of Colt and Sonny. All right, and Mr. Zarni, your name for the record, please. Uh, Colin Zarni. All right, and so today is the date scheduled for a sentencing on your client's plea as charged with disorderly conduct. The assault and battery was dismissed. And counsel, you're appearing on Zoom. Apparently, yes. you're in person, but I don't recall that. And Mr. Zarni, you're in person. And um, do you have any objection to appearing uh, no, in person with your attorney on Zoom? Uh, if that was okay by you, I have no objection. Your Honor. All right, and you can see and hear your attorney? Correct, Your Honor. Okay. All right, and um, as to the report and recommendation, counsel, have you had an opportunity to review that with your client? Yes, Your Honor. No corrections or deletions uh, on a couple of caveats, however. We went through okay. it this morning. All right. And so what are those, counsel? Well, just on the workforce, Your Honor, I'm not sure what you're going to do there. Uh, my clients work in most weeks, seven days, 12 hours uh, on that new bridge that they're trying to finish. And he's very limited for time. And he told me this morning that uh, his employer is already on to him about missing time to come to court. So he's kind of hanging by a thread. I just ask that you give him some consideration on that issue. Okay, if I recall correctly, this happened at Captain's, correct? Uh, whiskey's, Your Honor. Or whiskey's. And there was some inappropriate touching that was alleged at first, right? I, um, I don't recall, Your Honor, that that was not me. But if that's what's on the, I have yet to see the police report, Your Honor. I have yet to see anything of that additional information. Your attorney didn't share that with you? He's told me. Voice. But I, I did accept the plea, and I did go through the hoops, and I will go through the hoops, John. It's not that I will not go through what I have to go through. All right. So, because apparently um, there was some inappropriate touching alleged, and then after the bar closed, you and one of your buddies started fighting outside of the bar. I know that's what's alleged. I know you have plead the assault and battery, but you don't remember any of that, sir? I, me personally, as me as an individual, I can tr truthfully tell you I had not touched any woman or anybody except for what happened outside of the bar inappropriately. Okay. And I do stand on that. Okay. All right. With all due respect. All right. And so is Brianna Burris or Haley McCart present? Okay. All right. <clears throat> and I'm sorry, you said you were, you're working, are you on the board of Is that what you're working on? Yes, Your Honor. I've been there. I've been employed since March 2020, and I do start this project. And like I said, I don't mind going through any hoops or anything that I have to do to go through this. But, uh, you know, I am employed there since 2020, and it's a very big part of my life. You know, I do want to complete that project, and there's thousands of other, you know, employees that would love to take my spot. All right. Here's what the court's going to do. After reviewing the report and recommendation, hearing from counsel, hearing from Mr. Zarni, the court does find the thought that there's reasonable grounds to depart from MCL 769.5. The court does find the following sentence that the justice is reasonable and proportionate to the seriousness of the matter based upon the circumstances surrounding the defendant. And the court's going to send it to your 12 months probation. You're eligible for early discharge. I'll go over that in just a few moments. You're not to violate any criminal law or any of government. You're not to leave the state of the defendant to court. You're to report to police your probation officer as often as your probation officer may require. In person, in writing, or virtually. You're notified of probation officer immediately for any change in address or employment status. You're not to use any alcohol or drugs unless prescribed to be subjected to random testing. The rehabilitative goal for that condition so the court can match your progress in maintaining the absence of sobriety. The courts are going to also order you to participate in the chemical awareness program. The rehabilitative goal for that condition is to help you further educate yourself regarding drug and alcohol use so you, you can make better informed decisions in the future. Hopefully, you're not laying back here. Yes, sir. You also are going to have to participate in one day in your management class. The rehabilitative goal for that condition is to assist you in properly expressing your feelings and needs in an appropriate fashion and prepare you for upsetting situations so you don't um, react in the way that landing you here. Okay? Yes, sir. 
All right, and any questions regarding the terms and conditions? No, Your Honor. The court's going to also order that you're not to return to whiskeys on the water during the time of probation. The court's going to order a $300 fine, $100 screening assessment fee, $600 supervision oversight fee. That's 12 months at $50 a month. Since you're eligible for early discharge, up to half of that may not be due. $300 the cost of prosecution and crime victim assessment fee of $75. Justice system assessment fee of $50. And then the court order is part of $75. Which all fifteen hundred dollars, sir. And you did post a bond in the amount of one thousand dollars. You can apply that bond today. Do you have any other money to do today? Uh, no money to do today, Your Honor. But I can pay the full amount in thirty days. Okay. If, if that's okay with you. If not, I could do you know slightly less, but I can have that full amount paid in thirty days. Okay. So you'll have to only pay two hundred dollars at this point because we'll hold back. You can hold back the three hundred dollars based upon. Um, the likelihood of your discharge and early from probation, so then you wouldn't have to pay that. Okay. If so you do have to pay that additional one, you would just be paying monthly for each okay. month that your probation is extended, if it is. So, Your Honor, I just got a quick question. How much do, would I owe, or how much do you want me to pay for in 30 days? Well, 1000 your $1,000 bond we're applying today, so that leaves $200 that you'll have to pay. Okay. So, you can pay that in 30 days? I, I could pay that. I could probably swing over there right now, and I can come back and pay it today. Okay, well, whichever works for you. What I'll do, sir, is I'll just state by August 2nd. That's in okay. two weeks. Okay? That's perfect. Thank you, John. So if you're able to make that other payment today, that's fine. If you're not, that's fine, too. Um, given our certain our computer issue today with our internet, I can't guarantee that someone's able to process that payment for you right now. But the $200, you don't need to even come back. Okay. Um, if you want to stop at the window to confirm, you certainly can. Um, but but I totally understand. Time. All right. Any question? Anything else, counsel? Um, he just needs to uh, make sure that he uh, surrenders that bond and go to the window to do that. And so as I did state, you do have the um, right to request early discharge from probation, so long as all the following have occurred. You've completed at least half of your original term of probation. All probation requirements have been completed. You've had at least three months without any violations. All monies have been either paid full or you've made a good faith effort for making full payment. Okay? Yes, ma'am. All right. Good luck to you, sir. You just have a seat over probation. All right. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Judge. Thank you. Have a good day. All right. All right. We are going on the record in the matter of David Rudolph, 23530. Right here. Good morning, Your Honor. Neil DeBlake here on behalf of David Rudolph, who stands to my right. Mr. Rudolph, would you please state your name for the record? David Rudolph. Thank you, sir. All right, thank you. Today is the date scheduled for the jail review. Mr. Rudolph um, has been here on a number of occasions. The most recent is um, on March 14th. Mr. Rudolph's probation was revoked, and he was sentenced to five days jail, and also 60 days jail suspended with this review that was based upon a probation violation. And this is the second review. Yes, sir. It appears from the report that I have from the probation officer in this case that Mr. Rudolph has completed the obligations to this court. There was a matter of fun, uh, failure to make some pain assessment corrected. Although there's apparently some additional act activity in, out of Monroe Court, he is, uh, it is the recommendation of the probation department that the suspended jail sentence be canceled and that this case be closed out. And I think that's the appropriate uh, course uh, in the interest of uh, this, this Well, I'll, um, in all frankness, this um, recommendation was completed prior to Mr. Rudolph's continued emails and voicemails uh, while Ms. Shaw was out of the office towards the end of last week. One of the one of the conditions back in January, this court ordered that you were that any inappropriate comments with staff would result in violation. I heard the voicemails. Your Honor, all I wanted was an answer. You got no one answers answer. the phone around here. Sir, that's not true. I saw the emails back and forth between you and Ms. Shaw. 
you had a conversation where she told you that she spoke to myself and that I stated you had to be in person. Her voicemail recording stated she would be out of the office. Her email stated she would be out of the office. So when you send an email, it bounced back with the notice. Well, the, re the reply that you would have received was the automatic out of office reply. I know we received one. Her voicemail recording stated she would be out of the office. And she certainly is in the office on Saturdays. The messages you left, sir, were wholly inappropriate. Wholly inappropriate. And I've stated that before. You don't get to call up here, yell and scream at my staff, and make threats. You don't get, you don't get to call the wind out police department, yelling and screaming and making threats to them either, sir. That's not how it works. That's not how it works. Your Honor, I didn't threaten anyone. I made it. I may have made appropriate, inappropriate comments, but I didn't threaten anyone. What are the What are the new charges in Monroe? Um, I don't know. They're They're actually closed out. I like. I've done with my community service, um, and uh, all I have to do is make restitution and I'm done. Malicious use for telecommunication service? That was one of them, yes. Okay. Were you intoxicated when that happened or no? No. And assaulting, resisting, obstructing an officer? Yeah, six officers pulled me out of my front door and I was tased twice for doing nothing. Well, was that as a result of your uh, phone communications? I have no idea. More sir, likely. Sir, I understand that you served our country and that we are grateful for that. I also, also understand, sir, that you've had some other um, challenges along the way and that there have been services that have been offered to you <laughs> that um, you either have not utilized or it didn't work out or whatnot but sort of the current manner in which uh, business is being conducted by you is not working very well uh, can i address the the service issue they failed to keep appointments. They don't return phone calls either. Um, I basically raised my hands and gave up with them. And I'm in the, I have an appointment on August 2nd with the new constant um, service in Monroe. I took it upon myself. I was, at, I was there every time I was supposed to be bleeding my heart out to this individual. And he couldn't take the time enough to keep an appointment or call me back. And that's, and that's the whole reason why that happened. And I can certainly understand your frustration, sir. And I can understand your frustration when you call here and you say that you don't get a response. But we've, I've also told you many times, and I know Michelle has told you, even Ms. Shine, while Michelle wasn't here, is that email is the best way to, to communicate because you get a response. There, we are very short-staffed. There are a lot more people calling in than we have people that can answer the phones. Oftentimes, the easiest way or the most efficient way to communicate is via email. Council, this court stated that any inappropriate comments were going to result in a violation. The comments that were, the voicemails that were left um, for Michelle, the last two, would go against that order. Why should this court not send your client to jail? Well, I think the court is well aware of Mr. Mr. Rudolph's uh, history. He suffers cognitive issues. He obviously has impulse control. 
Uh, he's apologized for the, to the court, I believe. He acknowledges his inappropriate uh, behavior. Um, I don't know that he is in full control of those those issues. Um, I think he understands this is this is wrong. He's going to counseling. He's expressed his issues with his current counselor and has taken steps to obtain uh, uh, other counseling services, which you hope will help him to manage these. These are these are symptoms of a deeper problem. Yeah, he's not a bad guy. These are symptoms of a, of a of a problem that he's been wrestling with for years now. So we ask the court to show some leniency here and, and close out this case. The court has shown quite a bit of leniency with Mr. Rudolph. I understand Mr. Rudolph may not think so because of the nature of his charge and the fact that he's had to continue to come back and forth to court. Um, but there's been, there have been violations that is why he had to continue to come back to court, sir. When is your appointment, sir? Oh, August 2nd, Friday. That's next Friday? Yes. All right, here's what the court's going to do. Based upon the violation of this court's order, the court's going to order 10 days jail, then we're going to close this matter out. So then the balance of the 50 days then will be canceled. Anything else? Nothing for you. Okay. Thank you. You're going to go with the officers today. Good luck to you, sir. Go with the chance to be in the bench.